It's June 2023 and I'm in Buckingham in Buckinghamshire, a county it hasn't been county town of for nearly 500 years. Located on the banks of the Great Ouse River, that's the Buckinghamshire and Norfolk Ouse, not to be confused with the one in Sussex that runs through Lewis, or the one in Yorkshire that regularly floods the city of York, Buckingham can trace its current history back to the 7th century, when Anglo-Saxon settlers, led by their leader Booker, settled on land formed by a loop of a river. Even today, Buckingham sits in an odd position, with the southern end of the county being firm home counties territory, but just a few miles out of town, and you're definitely in the Midlands as you hit Northamptonshire. And to some extent, that split identity goes back to those early settlers, as for nearly 400 years the town changed hands between the Saxons and the Danes. In 914, King Edward the Elder and a Saxon army laid siege to the town for four weeks, forcing the local Danish Viking leaders to surrender. The Saxons subsequently built a fort in the location that's now occupied by the parish church. In the 10th century, the Shire of Buckingham was founded, with Buckingham becoming, naturally, the county town. However, Buckingham lost that title in 1529 when Aylesbury was promoted to the position of county town by King Henry VIII. The fact that Aylesbury Manor just happened to be owned by Thomas Boleyn, father of Anne Boleyn, who he married four years later when his first marriage was annulled, is just pure coincidence. The town finally received a charter in 1554 under Queen Mary. On the 15th of March 1725, a devastating fire ripped through the town, destroying much of the centre of Buckingham. The rebuild led to Buckingham's very Georgian appearance. One building that did survive the fire, and now the oldest surviving building in the town, was the Chantry Chapel. The chapel was originally established as a hospital in the 12th century, though the current building dates from rebuilding work carried out over a decade, starting in 1471. The building was subsequently used by the Royal Latin School, which remained on site until 1907. During that time, further restoration work was undertaken by local architect George Gilbert Scott, who also carried out work on the town's jail and parish church. George also built the Midland Grand Hotel at St Pancras Station, the Albert Memorial and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, amongst a couple of hundred other small projects. After the school moved out, the chapel was gifted to the National Trust in 1912, who still own the site. Today, opening it to look around and operating it as a cafe and bookshop. The work that Gilbert Scott carried out in the jail was to add an extension onto the front of the then 90-year-old building to provide accommodation for the jailer. The curved front giving the jail an almost stately home appearance from the original blocky prison building that opened in 1748. The jail also served as the town's police station for around 60 years before a new purpose-built station was opened a short distance away. In 1891 it became a fire station and part of the building was rented by C Company of the First Bucks Rifles as an armoury from 1892 until 1926. In the mid-20th century the building went through various uses including antique shop and cafe. In 1985 the Buckingham Heritage Trust was formed to save a then decaying building reopening the building as a museum in 1993, a role it still serves to the current day. Along with exhibitions on the different uses of the building over the years, and naturally Sir George Gilbert Scott, the museum also traces the history of the town and region from prehistoric to modern times. Exhibits weave in and out of the former cells, mixing the history of Buckingham and the history of the jail and its various inmates.
two and a half miles north of the old jail, the very opposite end of society is on show at Stowe House and Gardens, the former Grand Palace of the Temple Grenville family. John Temple was the first member of the family to serve as the High Sheriff of Buckinghamshire, and in 1589 he brought the manor and estate of Stowe. He served as a Member of Parliament, and in proof that Nepo babies aren't a new thing, his first son, Thomas Temple, also became an MP. In 1603, Thomas was knighted by James I, though there are suggestions he brought the honour. There's certainly no doubt that he did purchase a baronetcy in 1611, cash for honours, how very 21st century. Just to add to the whiff of corruption, he also purchased the borough of Buckingham, one of the rotten boroughs that allowed the family to have a near permanent presence in Parliament for several generations. His son, Sir Richard Temple, completely rebuilt the house that was on the site to create the core of what is today's Stowe House. The house and grounds remained for the family, undergoing expansions and extensions over the centuries. At the same time, the family also expanded and extended their titles, ending up as the Dukes of Buckingham and Chandos, until it passed to the Reverend Louis C.F.T. Morgan Grandel in 1921. Attached to the house by that time are what are described as prodigious debts, so Louis sold everything. After passing through various hands, the land and house ended up being purchased by the governors of what is now fee-paying Stowe School. Along with creating the current house, Sir Richard also started the development of the gardens and park. The gardens underwent major remodelling and development in the 18th century, with works carried out by Charles Bridgman, William Kent and from the 1740s onwards, Lancelot Capability Brown. Works across this time included the creation of canals, temples and follies that dot the grounds. The grounds remained part of Stowe School, who undertook some restoration work starting in the 1930s until donations allowed the National Trust to purchase the gardens and park in 1989, at which point they started a long-term restoration with the aim of having the bulk of the work completed by the end of the century. Further restoration programmes kicked off in 2015.
Buckingham lost its railway station in the early 1960s, closure coming before even the beaching cuts hit. Since then, it's been buses only, with the X5 bus running every 30 minutes between Oxford and Bedford, serving stations at Oxford for connections onto the cross-country network and trains in Paddington, Bista Town and Bista North on the lines from London Marabon, Milton Keynes on the West Coast Main Line from London to Birmingham, Manchester and Scotland, and Bedford on the Thames Link and Midland Main Line services. With the opening of East-West rail services between Oxford and Bedford, currently planned for late 2023 or 2024, Winslow Station will be a 20-minute bus ride via the Owley X60 service that also serves Aylesbury for further connections into Marblin. Mm-hmm.